Ryan Mansi here. In this tutorial, I will cover the creative use of RGB curves and blend modes. One of the main and most common uses for curves is to increase the contrast of an image within a specific area of the Luma channel. Here we can see an image that has a high contrast ratio, but it still looks very flat. In this case, I want to increase the contrast without affecting the white and black points. One of the easiest and most common ways to do that is by using the Luma curve. These curves often appear as standalone effects. For example, After Effects has a built-in Luma curve, as does Premiere. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Master Curve under the RGB Curves effect in Color Finesse. The curves each inhabit their own graph, the x-axis being the Luma or red, green or blue range of the clip, depending on the channel the curve affects, with the Luma value of 0 on the left and 100 on the right. The y-axis represents the actual luma values of the image, going from 0 at the bottom to 100 at the top. This means the bottom left point equals black and top right equals white. Moving any points on the curve up makes that area of the luma range brighter, whilst moving it down makes it darker. A common curves adjustment, known as the S-curve, is a simple and easy way to increase the contrast of a clip, whilst leaving the white and black points untouched. As we can see, the S-curve darkens the upper shadows, making them much deeper and harsh, whilst raising the lower highlights, giving a much wider contrast to the overall image. We can see the difference in the waveform monitor from the original clip, to the correction. Another key aspect of the curves adjustment is the ability to apply them to the RGB channels as well as the Luma. This clip has a decent contrast ratio, but I want to make it look more interesting. This is where the creative aspect of the curves comes in. I'll take you through some common adjustments, but when it comes to creative decisions, take your time and try out different things. For this example, I'll show you an adjustment we see quite often, especially with indie filmmakers. By raising the black point of the blue channel, we see a blue wash in the shadows up until the bottom part of the channel. This is similar to the cast created by excessive wheel adjustments, just more refined. Remembering how additive color works, by removing blue from the highlights, we are creating a soft yellow wash above the top of the blue channel. This is a result of red and green making yellow, without the blue to display the correct colors. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, yellow is blue's complement, so we have the highlights complementing the shadows, creating a basic but attractive stylized look. This is but one example of using complementary colors. Keep in mind that there are various other color theories. It's definitely worth looking them up and using them to aid your adjustments. They can help to anchor certain emotions and connotations whilst making the videos you color look professional and attractive. Though you can still learn a lot just by messing around with these effects. Yet another creative tool in your color correction arsenal is the use of blending modes. For now, we'll be looking at using the Color Blend mode. The effect I'm going to show you is simple, but has been used in various professional works, such as the music video for The Middle by Jimmy Eat World. Subtle use can also provide the basis for further corrections. As we can see here, I have a normal solid above my video layer with a ramp effect. This effect generates a two-color gradient. The Middle uses teal and orange, a common if not overly used blend of complementary colors. Firstly, I'll set teal as the start color, and orange as the end color, and then move the start and end points into positions of my choice. Now we can see a horizontal teal and orange gradient. It doesn't look like much, but if I set the blending mode to color, the video track below the solid ignores its own color values and uses the values generated by the solid. We can adjust how this blends with the original colors of the video by changing the opacity value of the solid. Bear in mind, the closer the opacity is to 50%, the less saturation the image has. This is a result of the color blend mode. 50% opacity means that the video track is keeping 50% of its saturation and using 50% of the solids, resulting in a considerably desaturated image. This can be counteracted by adjusting the saturation of either the solid, the video, or both. Finally, I'll show you a more complex use for blend modes. Clipped highlights can be a nightmare for any project. When using film, highlights have a certain bloom look to them, which softens the harshness of the clip. 
There are various ways to simulate highlight blooming, and this method is my own personal approach. As we can see, the blooming softens the light on the left nun's face, whilst making a soft glow around the trees. To get this effect, I use a mask and two blend modes. The mask is in another composition, as I need to give the masked part its own blending mode. The mask here is created using the color armor effect that comes with After Effects. Keep in mind there are various ways to create masks. Here we can see I've masked out the highlights in the clip, and soften the edges by giving values under a certain point a grey gradient. This is a Luma mask, so Luma values of 100% are where the bloom will show fully, and any values lower will show as though they have an opacity value equal to their Luma value. With the mask set, I need to create the soft bloom. One of the quickest and best methods to do this is to blur the mask. I normally find fast blur works best. In order to give color to the softened parts, I copied the base footage into the mask composition. From here, we can either set the base footage to use the mask as a luma mat, or we can set the blend mode to luminosity. For the purpose of this tutorial, I choose to use the luminosity blend mode. This means that the base footage ignores its own luma channel and uses the channel from the mask, which provides very similar results to using the mask as a luma mat. Finally, I set the blend mode of the blooming highlights to add. Add increases the RGB and Luma values of the track below, depending on the values in the blended track. This means that an RGB or Luma value of 0 adds nothing, whilst a value of 100 adds 100. The last thing to do is to adjust the opacity value of the blooming highlights to taste. That's all from me. Don't forget to check out my written tutorials in the description.